Hello, hello. Welcome to Shady Why. I'm Marilyn, and tonight we have part two of the Victorian to Art Deco period. And thank you for picking this one of my favorite types of jewelry. Um, if you haven't been here before, my name is Marilyn. My husband's name Barry, and we're resellers. We sell on eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, and YouTube. This is the items that were left from last night. These have not been purchased. Um, I probably will not show these again as they'll go straight to being listed on the eBay, Etsy, and Poshmark platforms. So if you're interested, definitely send us an email at one shadyandy at gmail.com. And I, uh, shipping is $5 in the United States. Uh, under a pound, anything over a pound or base, uh, over a pound or outside the United States is based on where you live and how much it weighs. So, um, what I didn't tell you last night was a little bit of information, which is quite interesting. Um, the Victorian era was from 1837 to 1901 and it's romantic Victorian era, the grand Victorian era and the aesthetic Victorian area. All really different and of course they were all influenced by um, Queen Victoria and um, they're all three very very different. Um, once um, you know she went into mourning everything became mourning pens and dark. Um, we're in the beginning of her marriage was very romantic and um, just a very um, sweet jewelry. Everything was hearts. Um, and then, of course, the Grand Victorian era is everything that's in the middle. Um, different places, um, locations, um, very, very different than the romance in the morning. So um, just a little bit of information on those three. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to what is available for tonight. If you didn't see part one, I'm going to put it up here in the corner and um, be sure after you watch this video to go see that. One. All right, here we go. These are the pieces that I showed last night that we did not do prices on. So let's go ahead and start that we're going to do. We're also going to do some gold testing with the key tester, which takes a little longer and I will see what I can get to. Um, there's only a few pieces of Victorian, and then we're going to move over to um, Art Deco. So um, we're going to start with um, these. These are really fabulous earrings. They are um, onyx. Oh, let me t see if this is, that's faux pearls um, on um gold tone chain and their screw backs. Let me give you a length. Of two inches and Victorian, um, this would be considered the um, morning period of Victorian. It is three eighths across. These are spectacular. And um, Victorian um, era loved dangle earrings because they wore their hair up. It looked really, really wonderful. So these um, onyx and faux pearl earrings, I'm going to do, um, these are fabulous. I don't see any cracks or anything. So I'm going to say, let's do $40 on these. Those are gorgeous. This is a sash pen um, with a C clasp, um, no markings. It is brass, I believe. Yes. And the detail on this is just gorgeous. It is glass. Um, red faceted glass and that's another thing in Victorian um, the facets and cuts were always handmade at this stage they were not doing um, machine um, uh, process stones until like right around the end of the century beginning of the century these flowers are beautiful um, pressed flowers just gorgeous let's give you a measurement on this it is three inches 
by one and three fourths. I think this is just exquisite with the detail. So I'm going to say, and this would have been used also as a sash pin or at the throat as a collar pin. So let's do $40 on that one. Now these two are um, probably morning pins and these are, um, I believe gold. So let's get out our gold tester here, which I've already turned on, calibrated to be sure we are correct. And I have also um, acid test out all of this. So I know the, um, the key gold tester is also correct. It's hard to do on the edges. That's what I tested at, is 14 karat gold, okay? Um, I don't believe, I believe the center back piece is, let's see if I can get in there. I believe that's brass. Yes, okay. So the only part that is um, gold on this is, um, well, let's test the pin back also. Okay, the pin back is testing much higher. Okay, so the pin back and um, the C-clasp is um, 22 carat. The um, braid and frame is 14 karat and the very back is brass. Um, so weighing this, it is 5.19 grams and um, because it equals out with the um, 22 to 24 karat and um, the lower, which is either um, gold filled or brass, um, I'm going to say that um, the higher gold and the lower gold, um, I'm going to just go with the center gold. And um, that at 14% at today's gold rates is $185. So I'm going to say, um, because it's not scrap, $185. Now this one um, also is the same thing. Um, the braid, oops. Let's see if this one is the same. No, let's try the frame. Now the frame on this one, no, let's try the pen bag. The pen bag does not look gold at all to me. So I'm gonna try it one more time. This one, I believe, are we on there? Yes. All right, I tested this with acid also. So it is 10 karat gold. Um, let's see over here, just to be sure I'm doing this right. All right, this one I'm not going to sell because it's um, tested at 14. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit um, more testing on this one. All right, this beautiful piece is in its original box. It is marked on it. It is 10 karat gold and the tester tested at 12, I believe. Um, it is a size five and let's see.
There it says 10 karat gold. I tested, I tested the um, stone and it is not a diamond. Um, it is open in the back. It might just need to be cleaned, um, but um, let's go ahead and test it for you. Well, we can put it right on there. Oh, helps for you to see. <laughs> All right, so it is between 10 and 14. And since we are marked at 10, we're going to go with 10. And, um, so we know this for a fact is not a scrap piece whatsoever. Um, weight wise, this is 1.6 and um, I could sell the box. Believe it or not, if you ever see vintage boxes like this, especially the push button boxes, um, which was from the mid to late um, 1800s. If you ever see a box like this, you literally can sell these boxes easily for $100. And the reason for that is they're hard to come by, the vintage real ones. Um, and there is uh, vintage and antique jewelry companies that will buy these with no issues. Um, so this one says... E, I mean, W.E. Fellows Jewelry, Flint, Michigan. And just a beautiful box. And okay, the gold alone at scrap is $60. No, $42. Um, so I'm going to do the ring for $60 with the box, and I'm not separating them. So I'm going to say $100 subscriber um, cost. Now... All of this is, oh, this one. Um, this is 800 filigree um, uh, C-clasp. It is a um, multi-layered filigree brooch. It is one and three-eighths, obviously by one and three-eighths. So just stunning. So I'm going to say... Let's do $35 on the filigree 800 silver brooch. Just to tell you a little bit about um, the Edwardian was from 1901 to 1950. And that was more of a um, England um, time period. You didn't see it a lot in the United States. You saw some drift over, but most of it was in England. And those designs were... Curved lines with florals, scrolls, loops. That was real indicative of that time period that is um, when they um, showed a lot of platinum. Um, and the platinum and the gold was intertwined a lot during that period. So you would see two-tone gold and also um, platinum grew in popularity like crazy in the Edwardian period. Um, also a lot of use of diamonds and pearls, um, just like the Victorian era, so that continued. Um, and um, Edwardian engagement rings became incredibly popular and they were very ornate, intricate, florally. So that was really what made up a lot of the filigree and the fine mila grain, um, which was introduced during this period. The next period would be Art Nouveau. And the Art Nouveau and the Edwardian periods intersected. And a lot of that was due to Art Nouveau was French-oriented. Okay, and Art Nouveau period, derived from the French for new art, was named after the um, 1895 opening of the um, Siegfried um, Bing's Parisian Gallery, um, and I'm going to butcher this, you know it, Mason, Mason 
uh, de la Art Nouveau. Um, and they were really aesthetically also into the arts and crafts, um, very florally, um, with nature, organic flowers draping kind of um, aesthetic. The Edwardian era jewelry, as I was saying, is a full of design, symmetrical, delicate, whereas the Art Nouveau jewelry is a celebration of like nature, free form. It's very organic in nature with no symmetry. So um, that time period, um, it's hard to find that those two periods because they're very small um, and it's difficult to find because people get them and they hang on to them. So if you happen to pawn them, definitely jump on them. Made it to Art Deco era. Art Deco is 1920s to the 1945s. Okay, and a lot of people um, don't like going that late. However, it was still being done even um, that far. So the Art Deco emerging after the conclusion of World War I took its name from the French architect, the Corbusier, I think is how you say it. He titled the Exposition International des Arts Decorifice, something like that, um, in 1925 at Expo Art Deco. This um, Art Deco era is a big departure um, from the other um, first two. And Art Deco jewelry is known for being um, geometrical, angular, clean look, um, Art Deco style inspired by many architects to design landmarks. Um, so it, you know, all went over to jewelry as usual. Platinum um, was the primary metal during the Art Deco um, period. So like sterling silvers and 800 silver. And those were super popular. So if you couldn't afford platinum, you obviously were going to move to the silver. You were also going to move over to just silver tone to be able to get that look. Also, diamonds, sapphires, rubies, onyx, emeralds helped uh, assert that bold, prominent aesthetic of the time. So we'll stop there. There's like, you know, uh, 40s and 50s. Um, there was a mix between the retro period, but I'll do more on that at a later date. These three pieces are Art Deco, okay, with a little bleed over, but you notice that um, we have rectangles instead of like a lot of swirls and pleasantries. Um, this is molded glass and um, marcasites and sterling silver. Um, let me see if there's any missing marcasites. Like up here, it's all pressed. There's no marcasites in these. Um, so let me see if there's any here. I do not see any. And there you have it marked sterling. That's another thing. Prior to 1970s in the United States, um, you rarely saw um, 925. Uh, so if it's in the 60s, it was always sterling or STR or um, SS or STG. Those were what you were looking for. Um, and that kind of gives you a really good base, not saying that it never was used, but it primarily was not. Um, Europe was using 925 a lot more than the United States. So that's what the back of this piece looks like. However, um, it is in tremendous um, condition. I'm just, I'm, anytime I'm looking at a um, Art Deco piece that still has the marcasites, I'm thrilled. So beautiful, beautiful. Oh, let's give you a length on this one. This is 15 inches with a roller clasp. And the roller clasp, I think, has a slight amount of um, discoloration. 
These three pieces are out of my personal collection. However, I will sell these two tonight. Um, this one is going to be, normally this would be listed for about $250, um, but as um, uh, subscribers, I'm going to offer this for $125 tonight. And then this one, um, also a uh, discoloration on the roller class. If it is a um, spring ring with a little knob like this, like that really has a thumb knob, that is, you know, after 1910, I believe the timeline was. Um, and um, if it has none, um, but a, um, like a little lip, that is earlier, so that's a good way of telling also. Now this piece, I believe, has a missing marcasite, but it does have the um, the molded glass. Yeah, this has missing marcasites. So one there, one there, and that's it. Uh, let's get you a size on this one. It is seven inches, and this one would be easy, um, both of these would be easy to extend. But considering the fact that this one has, um, and these do not match, um, when I first purchased them, I thought they did. Um, but this one is um, uh, rounded flowers, and this one is longer flower uh, leaves, rather, I should say. So I'm going to say, let's do... Um, 75 for the bracelet. Now this one I'm going to show you, but I'm still doing um, research um, because it tests at 10, uh, 10 karat gold and um, 10 karat gold would be like $800 um, because it's like 31 grams. It has blue um, glass rhinestones. There is one missing rhinestone here. This is very reminiscent of um, a very, very early um, um, Miriam Haskell. And um, in the very beginning of her career, she did not sign hers. So I'm going to do a little bit more research to find out 100% um, about the gold. Um, it does scratch at... Um, Scratches at 10, also test at 10. And I just want to do a little bit more research. Considering that it was so much interest in the Victorian, I, like I said, Victorian and Art Deco is my favorite timelines. So now that I know there's so much interest, I'll be doing a lot more Victorian pieces. So this piece um, is stunning. It has a scroll um, uh, chains, three of them. Um, it has a box clasp in the back. It's in excellent condition except for that one flower rhinestone missing right here. And it has the um, Baroque pearls um, that I believe these are painted Baroque pearls. But I will do more research. I bought this and I just put it away because I thought it was just tremendous. But if you do have interest in it, let me know. I'm going to do more interest. I'm going to take it to um, a jeweler and just get more information for us. Now, I'll go ahead and uh, do a couple of things that I definitely want to do on this um, video because we are going over... Um, Victorian Art Deco, I just want to quickly tell you about the other two periods that were um, done during this time. Um, not during this time. However, it was um, Victorian Revival, which was in the 40s. Okay. Um, this one is by um, Murano, and this is... Um, you can tell uh, Victorian versus Victorian Revival because in the Victorian Revival, they used a little bit cheaper um, uh, materials and the um, like portraits weren't as precise. This one is mesh with faux pearls 
and it the, opens up back here and it separates and then you just put it on like so and just snap it together and there you go so this is adjust it is eight and three fourths of an inch so it will really fit anybody who's interested in um, a Victorian revival piece so I'm going to do um, $30 on the Victorian Revival Murano piece. Now this piece is also that it is not missing any rhinestones. Um, gorgeous piece. It has the felt on the back. So this is just a findings that you would put on a bracelet um, or um, a necklace. Um, if you used it for a necklace, it already has a um, type of bell that you could use. So it's just a gorgeous piece. It is um, two and one fourth of an inch. N as I said, no missing rhinestones. So I'm going to say let's do um, let's do thirty on this piece. And then the Art Deco pieces that I want to show you is this one is an Art Deco Revival. Still has a tag on it. Let me see if this is a Revival piece. No, it's not. Let's see if this piece is a Revival piece. Yes, it is. Okay, so this is a perfect example. Okay, this is not an original chain. Okay, this is a box chain um, with a lobster clasp and it is um, 16 inches. This is a revival piece, art deco piece. It also is a very shiny um, uh, lobster clasp. It has an extension and it is 18 inches with an inch extension. Okay, this is a great example to show you. This box chain is probably from the um, 60s or 70s, could be from the 50s, but it's been on this piece a long time. And this piece is the revival piece, beautiful. Okay, let me see what it says on the inside. I thought I saw Mark. No, it doesn't have a mark. Let's do a quick test. And it is sterling. So um, there's the difference showing side by side a Art Deco piece and an Art Deco Revival piece. The Revival piece is very beautiful. It um, You can tell kind of behind um, by looking at the back always of almost any piece. Um, the older pieces are generally smoother, not always. Um, and that's the problem with dating um, jewelry is there is no hard, fast rule. Um, but most of the time, super vintage or antique is smooth, okay? The sterling is spelled out, like I said. Um, newer pieces aren't, um, like this piece, brand new. There's no wear on it. Like you could, if there was no sterling mark on here, um, it could have worn off from wear. However, this piece, it looks brand new, but it has no wear. Um, so this one, let's give you a, it is one, and um, three eighths by uh, five eighths, and it's a gorgeous piece. It has um, rhinestones. They could be cubic zirconia um, rhinestones here. And the reason I say that is because it has opening in the back. Cubic zirconia generally is open in the back. Rhinestones are generally closed. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to turn on my gem tester and just test it real quick. I believe it's glass. It's glass. 
glass, glass. Okay, so this one, let's do, it is gorgeous, so I'm gonna say let's do $25 on this one. This one um, is stunning. Um, definitely Art Deco glass. It is one and a quarter inch by one inch. And this one, I'm going to say, um, cause it's just beautiful. Look at the detail on these pieces. I'm going to say, um, 120 on this one. Uh, this would be, um, easily a $250 one. And this last piece we have, it has a roller clasp. Uh, let's see, did we see uh, a mark? Let's test this one real quick. This will be our last one for tonight. And definitely in the comments, let me know if you're interested in more Victorian Art Deco. Do you wanna learn more about it? Do you want me to go over the um, dates and timelines like do more of that like um the following periods and just continue on do another victorian art deco um after we do some of the sterling gemstones um so this is glass this is i believe i believe it's pronounced rhodium plated um and it is One and a half inch by three fourths of an inch. On this one, I'm going to do $25. This one is Coro, an early Coro that was done in um, the Art Deco time. It is gold filled, I mean, no, it is gold tone, mother of pearl rhinestones, and the rhinestones are clear, clear and purple. And it is signed right here, Coro. Um, very, very nice piece. Let's get you a measurement. One and a quarter inch. So I'm going to say, let's do, um, it is a gorgeous um, layered piece. So let's do $20 on the Coro. So there you have it. Definitely give us a thumbs up. Let us know what you thought. If you saw anything that interests you, leave us an email at one shadingy at gmail.com. Subscribe below if you haven't already. Be sure you know we appreciate you spending a little bit of your day with us, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye.